In this video, we are going to be looking at finding maximum and minimum values of a function in the context of an application problem. And what I mean by that is we're going to be given a, a story or some sort of application like profit, average cost, revenue, or volume, and we need to find the maximum or minimum values. So for instance, we might be maximizing profit, we might be minimizing average cost, we might be maximizing revenue, or maximizing volume. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply what we've already learned about finding the maximum and minimum values of a function to these application problems. And we're going to remind ourselves how we build those profit, average cost, revenue, or volume functions because those functions, those are our objective functions. These are our function that is supposed to be maximized or minimized. We're going to call that the objective function. And then once we do all that, I'm also going to show you how to use the calculator to help locate the extrema. So here's our steps. In order to maximize or minimize, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to identify the unknowns. So these are the variables. What quantities are we looking at? Are we, what are variables? Are we looking at price? Are we looking at the length of the side of a box? And we're going to identify those unknowns explicitly and write them down. And if necessary, we're going to draw diagrams. So this typically comes up when there's some sort of geometry component. Once we know all of our unknowns, we're going to build that objective function. So remember the objective function, that is the function that we are trying to maximize or minimize. And typically, we're going to end up with more than one variable. So we want to make sure that we have just one variable in our final objective function. Next, we're going to identify the constraints or restrictions. So what values make sense for these variables? So remember, with the extreme value theorem, we're only guaranteed that max, absolute max, and absolute min when we have that closed bounded interval. Part of our process is going to be to figure out, well, what is the interval where this, this um, particular objective function makes sense? Then finally, we're going to state that the problem explicitly. So we're trying to maximize revenue over some interval would be an example. And then we're going to solve that optimization problem. And we're going to solve this in two ways. We're going to solve it algebraically like we did in the previous section. And then we're also going to solve it graphically. So that means using our calculator. So let's look at this first example. It says the marketing department of a video game seller determines that at a price of P dollars it can sell Q equals 150,000 minus 2,000 P games, but each copy costs $20 per, to make. What price will give the greatest profit? Okay, so let's go through our process here. We have steps one, two, and three written on this page. So the first thing we need to do is identify our unknowns. So they give us two of our unknowns up here because they give us that demand function. So P is our price and Q, this is our demand, the number of copies. But we're also talking about profit, so that is another unknown. So let's call that um, capital F. We could use capital P, that's what we tend to use, but sometimes it can get a little confusing when we've got a lowercase p and a capital P in a problem. So the next thing we need to do is build the objective function. So remember, our objective is to maximize the profit. So our objective function is going to be our profit function. And so profit always equals revenue minus cost. So our revenue function is our price times our quantity. And our cost function, each one costs us twenty dollars so it's going to be twenty q so this profit function is going to be p q minus twenty q the problem here is that i've got two variables i've got the p and i've got the q 
and I need to have this be in just in terms of one variable. So if we look back up to the statement of this problem, we've got Q in terms of P. So I'm going to take that and plug that in right down here. So we're going to have P times 150,000 minus 2,000 P minus 20 times that 150,000 minus 2000 P. So pause the video for a second and go through the process of finding or simplifying this because we don't want to leave it just like it is. It's going to be easier to work with if we simplify. So here we have our profit function. It's negative 2000 P squared plus 190,000 P minus 3 million. Okay, so now let's look at our constraints. So when we're thinking about constraints, we want to make sure that our P is always greater than or equal to zero and our Q is always greater than or equal to zero because you can't have a negative price and you can't have a negative quantity. So this right here gives us the left hand endpoint of that interval. So our our interval that our function is going to be maximized on, it's going to start at zero. And if we look at this Q being greater than or equal to zero, this tells us that 150,000 minus 2,000 P is, has to be greater than or equal to zero. And if you solve this, so move this 2,000 P over on the right hand side of the equation, or the inequality, divide both sides by 2,000, we're going to get P is less than or equal to 75. So the other side of our interval is 75. So now let's take this and start with step four where, where we actually find those maximum and minimum values. Actually in this one we only want the greatest so we're trying to find that maximum value of our profit. Okay so now we're going to look at this next step, we're supposed to state and solve the optimization problem. So our the statement part, our goal is to maximize our profit function, which I'm calling f, so as I don't confuse the p's. And my profit function we found in the previous part is this function right here. And we're trying to do this on the interval 0 to 75. So this is the values of p that make sense. So Let's go back and use our techniques from the previous section. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find those stationary points. And remember those occur where your derivative equals zero. So our f prime is going to be equal to negative 4,000 p plus 190,000 we want this to equal zero, so this gives us 190,000 equals 4,000 P. Divide by 4,000 and we get P equals 47.5. So this means um, our, pro our price would have to be $47.50. So Going back to our, our usual plan, the next thing we look for is those singular points. And remember, those occur where that derivative does not exist. And here is my derivative right here. Remember, when you're looking for singular points, you're looking for where this doesn't make sense, where you, there's a value that you can't plug in here. But this is a linear function. Any value is, is going to be safe to plug in, so there are no singular points. The next thing we look at are those endpoints. And so we have two. We have P equals zero and P equals 75. Then once we get that, we find those values. We build a table. So we have zero, we have 4750, and we have 75. And let's build the table using our calculator. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my function in my y1. So here I have my function in my y1. 
let's go ahead and look at the table. So second graph, clear out these previous values and plug in the values that I want to look at, 0, 47.50, and 75. So if we look here, let's, let's write down these values. Notice it, it gives us something a little bit weird on our y1 here. It says negative 3e6. So that means that's the calculator shorthand for negative 3 times 10 to the 6. So we are going to have a profit of negative 3 million when our price is 0. So that's a big loss. We have a profit of... $1,512,500 when our price is $47.50 and then for $75 we have a profit of zero. So clearly the maximum profit occurs when our price is $47.50 per game. Let's see how we could have solved this completely using the calculator. So if we were going to solve this graphically, we would still have our function in Y1. So step one, we would put our F in Y1, which we have already done. Step two, we have to choose that window. So let's go to our window. So remember, our function we're trying to maximize on the interval 0 to 75. So this is going to give me the x values of our window. So we're going to go from 0 up to 75. And an x scale of, say, 5 would be good. Let's pretend that I don't know what those values for my y's look like. So let's use our zoom fit to come up with our y values for our, our window. So zoom, so as long as you have the x set with zoom fit, what it'll do is it'll choose the y values for your y min and your y max so that it works for your x values. Okay, so this usually gives us a place to start, but it doesn't give us the final window. So we have two things that I don't like about this. So first, on my my axis over here, do you see how it, I can't see any space between tick marks? So let's fix that first. So we're going to press Window. And if I'm going from negative 3 million up to a little 1.5 million, a Y scale of 5 isn't appropriate. So let's make the Y scale be 500,000. And let's graph again. So now I can see space between my tick marks. This is the spot right up here that I want to find. I want to find where that's maximum. I need to fix my window a little and let me show you why. If I use my calculator's feature to try to find this spot, that's the second calc menu and we would be using the maximum option. When I go to do this, I have to answer these questions, left bound and right bound, but do you see that my curve is hidden by my, um, my Y1 here? So I need to put some space between the top of my profit function and the top of the screen. So let's press window and we're, we need to put some space, so we need to make this Y max be bigger. So let's go up to say 2 million. 500,000. Let's see if this works. Oftentimes you have to tinker a little to get things so that you it, it works for you. Now I have some space between the top of my curve and the top of my window. I can see tick, the space between my tick marks on my y-axis. So this looks like a, a good window. Let's find that max. Second trace. We're going to choose maximum. It asks us for a left bound, so go to the left of the max, press enter. It asks us for a right bound, so make sure you're to the right of the max, press enter. And then it asks you for a guess, you can just press enter again. And we're going to need to round here. It tells us that our x value is 47 point about 50, so that means our p 
is $47.50. And then it tells us our Y value is 1,512,500. So that means our profit, or our F, is that $1,512,500. So this is how you would find this maximum totally graphically. So that's the end of this video. Stop by to see another example of finding the max or a min of an application problem.